Hello, my name is Ilias Yosifidis and I'm going to present you our study entitled Molecular Diagnostics as a Tool for Active Surveillance of Antimicrobial Resistance in a Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. I would like to start my presentation by focusing on antimicrobial resistance, which is a major public health threat. The knowledge of the burden of antimicrobial resistance in Europe is important to guide interventions. For this reason, I would like to introduce you a new metric which is called Disability Adjusted Life Years or DALI. One DALI is one lost year of healthy life. Using this metric, we can see in Europe that the major problem for healthcare associated infections is as microbial resistance in gram negative bacteria such as Escherichia coli, which is resistant to cephalosporins, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is resistant to carbapenems, Klebsiella pneumonia, which is resistant to cephalosporins. What about at microbial resistance and age distribution? We always think that this affects probably all people. However, using again this metric, DALIS, we can see that healthcare associated infections caused by resistant bacteria cause high DALIS, especially in pediatric patients. There's a major concern in infants less than one year. We need to know which patients have antimicrobial resistant bacteria. For this reason, we have to detect both infected and colonized patients. In order to do this, we need active surveillance, which can be done by cultures, and then we can do molecular diagnostics, or to do molecular diagnostics directly to clinical samples, which is something new. In addition, we need to know the local epidemiology. In our pediatric ICU, we have done active surveillance cultures for carbapenem resistant bacteria, and as we can see in the figure, that we have a problem with uh, carbapenem resistant Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, and Escherichia In addition, we did a molecular testing in these isolates, and we found which carbapenem maces were more frequent, and we found that these were mostly. KPC carbapenemases, followed by VIM carbapenemases, and then there were very few OXA. Why should we care for molecular diagnostics? The reason is that, first of all, we need to optimize antimicrobial therapy for our children. The use of the newer antimicrobial agents is highly dependent on the underlying mechanism of resistance. In addition, we need to know molecular diagnostics for infection control purposes in order to avoid acquisition of multiple resistance. I'm going to give you an example. If we cohort people by, the, by phenotype and not by carbapenemase genes, then we may have in the same room three children that are colonized by, by bacteria that are resistant to carbapenems. But if we then do molecular testing, we can find that these children had different carbapenemase genes. So by cohorting them in the same room, we may end up mixing these different carbapenemase genes. The aim of this project was to design and implement an active surveillance clinical protocol as part of a pilot study in order to develop high clinical value molecular diagnostics directly to clinical samples as a guide for monitoring antimicrobial resistance in a pediatric ICU, which is endemic for antimicrobial resistance. So this is a, a multidisciplinary pediatric ICU with eight beds and two isolation rooms. We included pediatric patients less than four, 14 years old and especially those that were hospitalized for at least seven days. Samples were collected between July 2018 to February 2019. Patients that were found negative were re-evaluated after at least one month. 
For as clinical samples, we used tools. We didn't use any rectal swabs. We did molecular testing targeting specific beta-lactamases. These were six most frequent beta-lactamases among gram-negative bacteria. There were four carbapenemases, namely KPC, OXA48, VIM, and NDM. We also targeted two beta-lactamases, TEM and ACHV, that provide multi-resistance to beta-lactams antibiotics such as penicillins and cephalosporins. Uh, we used molecular detection of the resistant genes doing extraction of the DNA, PCR, and then detection of the PCR product according to standard procedures. We're moving to the results. We had stool samples from 36 patients. The median age of these patients was 4 years, ranging from 3 months to 14 years. All children were incubated and all had central venous catheter. 80% of these patients were positive for at least one beta-lactamase, TEM or SHV. Half of them were colonized with carbapenemase, and only six patients were negative for all targeted genes. In 18 patients, at least one carbapenemase was detected. There were 13 children with KPC, 11 children with VIM, there was no child with NDM or OXA48. The median duration for acquisition was one month. We also found that there was coexistence of two carbapenemases, KPC and VIM, in one third of patients. 22 children were colonized with bacteria carrying TEM beta lactamase. Half of them also had carbapenemase such as KPC or VIM or both. Twelve children were colonized with bacteria carrying SHV beta-lactamase. Half of them also had a carbapenemase, KPC or VIM or both. We did a direct molecular testing and also compared the results with antimicrobial surveillance cultures. Among patients with a positive PCR in stools for targeted carbapenemases, only half of them had also a positive culture for carbapenem resistance. 20% of these children had culture that was turned positive for carbapenem resistance after weeks, whereas 30% of patients had a, P a positive PCR and a negative culture for carbapenem resistance. Here we can see the everyday targeted resistome floor plan, which was given to healthcare workers during the study. In addition, here we can see the follow-up of two initially negative patients. The first of them acquired a KPC during the stay in the PQ, whereas the second patient was a success story, and after two months of staying in the pediatric ICU, did not colonize with any carbapenemase. Here we can see the progression of carbapenemase colonization in our pediatric ICU. We can see that during the first months of the study, during 2018, there were a lot of patients colonized with carbapenemase, mostly KPC and VIM. However, during the end of the study, in 2019, there were less children that were colonized with carbapenemase, especially with KPC. So we can conclude that the direct implementation of a targeted and customized rapid molecular detection assay to clinical samples was effective to recognize the burden of bacterial resistance in a clinical setting endemic to resistant bacteria. Molecular and microbial resistance surveillance combined with prompt notification of clinical staff on patient's colonization status may have contributed in the reduction of KPC carrying strains in this study. Thank you very much.